Cool. Welcome everybody to our little Bible study. And today we're covering 2 Timothy chapter 4. And we're so glad that you've joined us. And it's going to be a very exciting study today because we're going to talk about our victory in Jesus, mm-hmm. our Savior forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so um, we're going to also talk about why it's so important to know when the body of Christ began and some other things. So we have Second Timothy chapter 4, victory. So even though our Apostle Paul dies in this chapter, the Lord Jesus Christ has given us a complete victory program. And itching ears. Do we have itching ears for things other than what God says in His Word, rightly divided? Or do we want to believe what God said in His Word, rightly divided? So, before we look at the back, let's say a little prayer. Mm -hmm. Dear Father God, in Jesus' name we come before you, and we thank you for this beautiful day. Mm -hmm. I thank you for my friends being here. Mm -hmm. Lynn and Patty and Nancy and Annie and Zandra and I'm so blessed to be able to have this opportunity to help people be saved and come to knowledge of the truth because of your spirit speaking and your word and not by any power of our own. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so 2 Timothy chapter 4. Victory, itching ears. So let's look at that verse that has that itching ears in it. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. So they're going to have some teachers that are not going to be teaching the Pauline doctrine. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So what are those fables? Those fables are maybe following human wisdom or maybe following what was taught or the instructions in a previous dispensation or maybe in a dispensation to come. Because the enemy wants to mix us up. He doesn't want us to know what the mystery was. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Not one. Job 14.4 Okay, so this is said in the book of Job. But God was able to bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing. So how can a woman that's a sinner, that gives birth to a sinner, have somebody, you know, that's unclean become clean in the eyes of God? Because unless they're clean, you know, they'll have to be obliterated because God can't tolerate sin. So how did God solve that problem? We're going to look at that right now. Okay. So, here we go. It was by imputed righteousness. So, when we believe the gospel, and we'll be going over the gospel in just a little bit, we, when we believe what the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, did when He died for our sins on the cross, was buried in the tomb, and rose again the third day, when we believe that, then our sin is placed on Him, and His righteousness is given to us. So there's a transaction that occurs. So now, I, the believer has the spirit of the Son of God. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, these these have to trade. Okay. Mm-hmm. You have to imagine that that's what happened mm-hmm. because I missed my blue blue little man that was supposed to be 
exchange for the red. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I have, or you have, or the believer has the Spirit of God in him, and when the believer receives a glorified body, then they have God's Spirit in a glorified body, and God has made something unclean clean. Mm. Okay, wow. but that's not all. Mm -hmm. God has given us a complete victory program. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, in Romans, we learn that there's four pillars, or four sections. So, chapters 1 through 5 is about our justification. This is just what we just explained. How that when we believe, Christ took our sins and we received his righteousness. That's in chapters 1 through 5. Then in chapters 6 through 8, we learn about our sanctification. That we're, we can be set apart to God for the service. And that how that all takes place is because of our spiritual identification with his death, burial, and repentance and resurrection so when he died I died when he was buried I was buried when he rose again I rose again with him so that spiritual identification is how we can now serve in a victorious life because we have not only do, are we saved by faith but we live by faith and we have His Spirit in us. God has given us two things. His Spirit in the believer and His Word. And so with those two things, His grace is sufficient for us. That's all we need. So we need to understand how this sanctification process works. And we've been going over one chapter of Romans in the last three Second Timothy studies. And so today we're going to cover chapter 8 of Romans. Then in chapters 9 through 11, it's about our righteousness opportunity is limited because we're going to be raptured. Okay? And so we, can, we are elected for service. 9 through 11 has nothing to do with salvation. It's all about that God has elected two groups of people to serve him. Peter's group and Paul's group and then 12 through 16 is how to now serve God in the practical details of our lives so we have a complete victory program but through the spiritual identification with Christ's death burial and resurrection we're going to be looking at that today so um we are, we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. So, we are your servants. And we are ambassadors for Christ. We are all to be ambassadors for Christ. So, we're going to talk a little bit about, um, first of all, I wanted to show you what's happening is Paul is in the Maritime prison in Rome, in his second imprisonment in Rome, and Luke is the only one that's with him. Everyone else has pretty much deserted him because it looks like he's going to be executed. So he's writing his very last letter <coughs> to Timothy, to encourage Timothy to carry on. Now, what's happening in this picture? This was a very important event that occurred in Act 19. And we're going to be looking at this because it was a very pivotal event in many ways. So what's going on here is that the people of Ephesus are burning their um, books that have to do with... Um, you know, magic and, and, and those kinds of arts. Mm -hmm. You know, those books that had was about Satan and his power because they don't want to do that anymore. 
because they now understand Romans 6 through 8. They understand their spiritual identification with Christ. And this is what Paul realized. Because the, the, the scrolls that they burned, the books, were worth 50,000 um, pieces of silver. So this is a, this Romans information that Paul was teaching at Ephesus in the school of Tyrannus is having a huge effect on these people. And so Paul realizes that the doctrine works. Mm -hmm. It works better than he ever imagined. And it's the doctrine that he received from Jesus Christ. So, before we do anything else, let's take a look at that a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> so, when did Paul first teach the info or information in Romans? Okay. So, that's what we want to know. So, it was really in Acts 19, when he was in Ephesus, on his third apostolic journey. So... What happened there at Ephesus? Well, he was, it was the burning of the books, mm -hmm. remember? Mm -hmm. We just went over that. Mm -hmm. And then there was, you know, a chanting for two hours to Diana of the Ephesians. There was a mob riot that wanted to tear Paul apart. Who was behind the mob? Satan. That's right. Satan was behind the mob. Mm -hmm. So Paul is going to have to leave. And he's going to go up to Troas, and then he's going to go into Macedonia. And he's going to be looking for um, Titus. Hmm. And he, he won't find Titus in Troas, so he'll go on into Macedonia, and then he'll run into Titus. And then he sends Titus back to Corinth to take up a collection for the poor saints in Jerusalem. In the meantime, Paul would go up and around Illyricum and then take the long way back to Corinth. When he gets to Corinth, he stays there for three months over the winter and writes the Book of Romans. Mm -hmm. The Book of Romans is for the people living in Rome. Paul had never been there yet. So mm -hmm. he writes that book there and he tells them, you know, after I've done all these other things, I'm going to come to see you. I'm going to come to see you because I've got this collection, first of all, that I have to deliver to the poor saints at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So he's going to, he wants to sail to Syria, but the Jews were lying in wait. So he has to go the inland route to um, meet up in Asia in Troas with the, the delegates and then he finally makes it to Jerusalem okay then after Jerusalem he gets arrested in Jerusalem and mm -hmm. taken to Caesarea for two years and then after that he's taken a prisoner to Rome okay he, has, he stays a little bit at Melita then he gets released after two years on house arrest and he goes and checks up on Ephesus and he leaves Timothy there and then after he's left Timothy there he uh, goes in back to Macedonia checks there he has Titus in Crete and somewhere he gets rearrested so it's, I believe it's in Miletum that he gets rearrested and taken a prisoner to Rome why does he get rearrested re okay because Someone's complaining about him. And okay, and it, preaching. His it, it, his preaching. Yeah. The gospel of the, Christ. Yeah, that's right. So here we have it in a nutshell in Acts 19. Many of them, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it fifty thousand pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Okay? Mm. You can see the big impact here of the 
teaching that he had done at the school of Tyrannus for two years. He was in Ephesus for three. After these things, after this money, I mean, you know, these mm -hmm. books that were worth that much money mm -hmm. were burnt. Mm -hmm. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit. So now Paul decides in the spirit of his mind because it had such a powerful impact. Okay, this is very important, Nancy. I want you to see this. When he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, he said, I got to tell the church in Philippi, I got to tell the church in Thessalonica and Berea about this doctrine. And then I got to go to Jerusalem and let them know too. This is so powerful mm -hmm. what God is doing. I want them to hear mm -hmm. this information. Mm -hmm. Saying, after I have done, been there, I must also see Rome. So Paul decides in his spirit, he's still, he's going to go to Rome. He wants to go there. Okay, Paul makes all these big plans, but what happens? So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a season. So he's decided to stay in Ephesus. Okay? That's when the riot breaks out. Mm -hmm. But when they knew that he was a Jew, okay, this is Alexander, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Acts 19.34. This was 1922, uh, 1919 through 22. Okay, so there's this mob riot with chanting, and Paul's friends say, don't go in that amphitheater, Paul. They'll tear you apart. You know, stay out of there. Mm. For we are... Okay, and so at the end of all of this writing, the town clerk says, For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar. There being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. Okay, that was at... 1940 okay so there's no reason that they should behave like they have been behaving making this chanting okay <clears throat> so and after the uproar was ceased the two hours of chanting paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them and departed to go to into macedonia so this is when he then leaves. He decides, you know, I can't stay in Ephesus. It's too dangerous. And um, so he's going to go to Macedonia and run into Titus, right? Mm -hmm. And when he had gone over these parts and had given them much exhortation in Macedonia, he came into Greece and there abode three months. That's where he wrote Romans. Uh -huh. And when the Jews laid in wait for him as he was about to sail into Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. So he's now going to take the land trip instead of the ocean trip. And there, okay, so that was uh, Acts 21 through 3. Here comes 4. And there accompanied him into Asia, Sopater, because he's going, he's going to, you know, Asia and then down to Jerusalem. Sopater of Berea. He was one of the delegates of springing the money from Berea to the poor saints in Jerusalem. And of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Secundus. And Gaius of Derby and Timotheus. So Gaius of Derby, that's in the middle of Galatia. And Timotheus was from Lystra. Um, and of Asia, Tychicus and Trophimus. So Tychicus and Trophimus are two men from Ephesus. Okay? Mm -hmm. So um, they were all trusted men to take this money to Jerusalem. So we're going to get back to that as we do our lesson. So is, are you acceptable? Are what you're doing in serving God is it your way or God's way? Okay? If you want to serve God, you can't make up your own theology. Okay? You have to serve God God's way. 
So, this thou knowest, okay, this is talking about apostasy. Apostasy is departing from the truth. And in this case, departing from Paul and Paul's instructions to the body of Christ in Romans 2 Philemon, those 13 letters, is departing from Paul. Apostasy is departing from Pauline truth to the body of Christ. It's believing something else other than that. Mm -hmm. This thou knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. 2 Timothy mm -hmm. one fifteen. So they were turned away from Pauline truth, and they, they led a big defection from Paul. And, you know, they started teaching and elevating themselves instead of Jesus Christ according to the mystery. That happens a lot. And then we're going to read in this chapter, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Okay, so Demas has forsaken Pauline truth, and he's more interested in the pleasures of this world. He's more interested in maybe building his own house instead of building the house, um, I mean, the, the body of Christ. And he might be more interested in doing things, worldly pleasures, than serving God. And it's departed unto his Thessalonica, so that he went back there, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. So these men <coughs> went, you know, probably on different ministry uh, things that Paul sent them to, the, the last two. Because no one really wanted to hang out with Paul after they found out that he was probably going to be executed. Okay. Oh, what's on the back of this? Let me see. Oh, yeah! The Spirit of Promise! Uh -huh. Okay, remember I said we have the Spirit of Jesus Christ in us? Uh -huh. Okay, so that's how we're going to have success as far as being saved and living the Christian life. And we talked about what it, what it was unclean. See, if we're an unclean thing, how are we going to be able to serve God? Remember the agony of Romans 7? Paul wanted to do to serve God, but he couldn't. The things I wanted to do, I couldn't do. Oh. So he was screaming out, Oh, wretched man that I am, who's going to deliver me from this body mm -hmm. of sin? So now he's going to show us in Romans 8 how to actually serve God. Because it's also by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. We need the Spirit. Because in um, Psalms it says, Psalm 147, 5, Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Now, I know this was said to Israel, but can you understand how incredible God's, the Lord's power is? And His understanding is infinite. So, should I be more concerned about reading what God has to say, or writing my memoirs? <laughs> well, what do you say? Yeah. Read what God says. Read what God said, right? Because He's the one with the infinite understanding, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And who was it that kept the law? Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. Psalm 40, 7 and 8. So the Lord Jesus Christ had the law in his heart and he delighted to obey it. So Jesus Christ has already kept it. So we're going to be talking about what's God's will today. And we'll see that in a minute. Okay. So many people have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So a form of godliness is having... Uh, not having, um, you know, the, not following the instructions. Mm -hmm. You know, doing it their way instead of God's way. Mm -hmm. From such, turn away. So if oh. someone is teaching you their way instead of God's way, and in this chapter too, we're going to find out about, you know, 
God has a crown or reward for everyone that loves his appearing. So what does that mean? We're going to cover that in just a second. I can't find my pointer. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's go over our lesson. Wait, let me do this first. So in this chapter, oh yeah, we have to sing our song. We, we, we found out that there were some men that were saying that the, 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 the rapture was past already, the resurrection was past already, mm. and that we were, you know, that they thought the body of Christ was either in the seven-year tribulation or in the kingdom. Hmm. Okay? In, you know, that's what they said in um, 2 Timothy 2.17. But what had actually happened was that God had opened up a whole new different dispensation of grace where God is saying, my son is paid for all the sins. Mm -hmm. And I'm not mad at you. I want to be your friend. Do you want to be my friend and shake my hand? Well, all you have to do is believe what my son did for you. And then we could be friends. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go, I'll take my chances in the hot place. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some people are like that. Before uh -huh. we sing our song, let's get into our chapter. Okay? Okay. Second Timothy chapter 4. Paul's challenge to Timothy. Verses 1 through 4. Preach the word. Five through eight, keep the faith and fulfill your ministry like I did. Nine through thirteen, hurry to come to me and bring the parchments, books, and cloak. Fourteen, fifteen, warnings to be aware of Alexander the coppersmith. He was somebody at, in Acts 19 during that chanting. And he made what with coffee? During the two hours of chanting. Uh -huh. Remember that? He was partaking in that against Paul. 16 through 18. At my first answer, none stood with me, but all men forsook me. So when Paul stood up before Nero to give his, have his first legal hearing, no one stood with him. Everyone departed from Paul. 19 through 22, greet our friends, say goodbye to them. Okay, here are some questions we might have. For what reason is the therefore, therefore in 4.1? Um, which kingdom is Paul referring to in 4.1? What is Timothy to do in light of the great, even greater apostasy? What are the fables in 4.4? What was Paul's challenge to Timothy in 4.5-7? What does apostasy mean? We've already covered that. It means to depart from the truth. What did Paul mean by, I have fought a good fight in 4.7? I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. What was probably Paul's time of departing? The time of his execution. Mm -hmm. Okay, I better just say it right now. It was probably in the fall of <clears throat> 67, because Nero died in uh, um, 68, and also he's wanting his cloak, so he's, you know, preparing for winter. Uh -huh. um, how can Timothy make full proof of thy ministry? How is Paul ready to be offered? 4-5. Who will receive a crown? 4-8. All that love his appearing. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that next. How did Demas forsake Paul? 4-10. Four, we covered that. Why did Paul want Timothy to bring Mark? Wasn't he a little flock believer? As it says in Luke 12-32. In 4.11, why did Paul send Tychicus to Ephesus? Where was Paul most likely captured and taken prisoner to Rome? 
who is an enemy of the cross because they mind earthly things, Philippians. What are the books and the parchment? Oh, yeah. Philippians 3, 17 through 19. What are the books and the parchments in 4, 13? What did Paul mean by all men forsook him at his first answer? We covered that. Why did Paul warn Timothy about Alexander the coppersmith? What was Paul accused of? How did the Lord strengthen Paul when he preached before uh, Nero? 4.17 What is the evil work in 4.18? What is the heavenly kingdom and crown in 4.18? When did Paul mention... No, why did Paul mention Prisca or Priscilla before Aquila? Okay, I'll just tell you right now, because probably during that chanting for two hours, he probably hid in their house, and probably the one who showed the most concern and care and love and courage was Priscilla. And because he also mentions her first in the end of Romans. Um, how can the love... Lord be with his, his spirit. Hmm. Uh, and that's the last thing hmm. in that chapter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we're going to speak <coughs> about our victory. Oh. Because the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, we have a real victory program. Don't worry about it, Pat, Patty. Patty, she has all the verses up here. So, our, the star of the show are the verses. Mm. Okay? So, we have complete victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, not only in salvation, but also in how we sanctification. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 56 through 58. Okay, nice. let's find our song. Um, where did I put my, my hymnal? Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it's victory in Jesus. And we know that there's going to be a new Jerusalem in heaven and on earth. So let's sing. 496. Um, Patty, are you ready? Okay. <clears throat> Are you ready, Lynn? Pat, Nancy? Okay, here we go. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning And His precious blood atoning then I repented of my sins and gave the and won, and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him. And all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Okay, now, after this one, we, we'll only do the refrain on the last one. Okay. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again And caused the blind to see And then I cried, dear Jesus Come and heal my broken spirit And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory Okay, last verse I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold 
beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood okay so What's he the loved flood? me ere i knew him oh. okay mm -hmm. so look at this girls he loved me about 2,000 years ago. Aww. It's been almost 2,000 years ago since he died on Calvary for my sins. So let's look over here. Let's look over here. See, Adam and Eve? Okay. Before Adam and Eve sinned, Lucifer sinned and became Satan. So there was rebellion in heaven, and then there was rebellion on earth. Now... It's wrong to vilify Eve, although it is true that she did subtract uh, from God's word, she watered it down, and um, she added to it too. So it's what the problem is, really, is the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and the, you know, um, what's the last one? Uh, something about the flesh. Okay. Okay. Something about the flesh. The part, part lust of, of the life. eyes. Lust, lust of the flesh. flesh. The yeah. Pride of life. The, yeah. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Mm -hmm. So those. Eight. So we're going to be looking at that. So there was about 2,000 years between Adam and Eve to Abraham. Then there was another 2,000 years from Abraham to about the time that the Son of God died on the cross for our sins. So how many thousands of years is that? Four. 4,000. Now it's been another 2,000, so how much we got? Six. 6,000. So what's left? The millennial reign of Christ. 1,000. Mm -hmm. So this is the millennial day theory. That our time, it's almost been 2,000 years since his death. And so that's why many of us think that the rapture might be soon. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, a theory that some people think is very interesting. So let's look about um, a little bit about um, Peter. Peter. Okay. All right. So, on Pentecost, in Acts 2, the Holy Ghost came down and empowered Peter to do um, what Christ had spoken about in Luke 13, 6 through 9. And he spake also this parable, a certain man, the father, had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser, the son, you know, the, the gardener, of his vineyard, the nation of Israel, um, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he, the dresser, the son, answering, said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. So that's in Luke 13, 6 through 9. So this is a one year extension of mercy from the time of the, that the Holy Ghost came down to empower the little flock till the stoning of Stephen. That was one year long. 
another opportunity to, for, for them to receive Christ. But the stoning of Stephen ended the opportunity, that one year opportunity for the nation of Israel. Leaders stoned Stephen. Mm. But these yellow people are the people that were saved under the ministry of John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, and the Twelve Apostles. And so those people are going to have some more added to them after our rapture. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have some of these little black people representing the body of Christ being saved to live in heaven. These yellow people are going to live on earth. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, um, this is what Paul says about Peter's group. Was Peter alive when Paul was alive? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yes. They were alive at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Even so then, at this present time, at the time when Paul was living, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Peter's group. That's the, the remnant. And if by grace, then it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. So God elected Peter's group and Paul's group out of grace of God, hmm. okay, um, to serve him. But if it be of works, then is it no more of grace, otherwise work is no more work. So grace and work are totally uh, exclusive and opposites. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he, he seeketh for, righteousness. But the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So Peter's group obtained it, and the rest of them were blinded. Mm. That's in Romans 11, 5 through 7. Mm. Okay, so Paul doesn't want us to be ignorant. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel. So Israel fell at the stoning of Stephen, and they were blinded in part because Peter's group still believed. So they weren't blinded. They continued until Acts 15 when they were put aside. Now, a lot of people that study Acts have a very simplistic idea of Acts. They don't understand that there's a, a little overlap between Acts 9 and Acts 15 of Peter and Paul's ministries. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But there's an overlap between Acts 9 and Acts 15 mm -hmm. where people are being saved into both the groups. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, until the... Okay, um happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. That's the rapture. After the rapture, mm -hmm. and so all Israel shall be saved. After we're out of here, God will continue his ministry with Israel, and all the believing in Israel will be saved. As it is written. See that? As it is written? Mm -hmm. It's prophesied. Mm -hmm. As it's been prophesied, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. So Paul is quoting Isaiah 59, 20. Okay? So do you think that God is going to fulfill Isaiah 59, 20 or not? He's going to be yes. He's yes. going to be faithful to them just like he's faithful to us. Okay. So we got that. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. I'm looking for this this uh, verse. I'm not finding it about the appearing. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Well, it it's Romans 26. I mean uh, Acts 26. Excellent. Acts 26. Don't worry about it, Patty. Okay. I can paraphrase it. Okay. Okay. So. In Acts 9, um, Paul was saved on the road to Damascus. 
Can everyone see this whole thing, Patty? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so when Paul was saved on the road to Damascus because mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to him. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's when Paul realized, oh, he's the one that died on the cross. The Lord Jesus of Nazareth, the one that died on the cross, was, you know, was buried and rose again. And now I see him risen. Okay, I see him in the air, risen and glorified. So Paul believed that instant and he was saved. But what he didn't know at that time, he received the spirit of Jesus in him, mm -hmm. but he was also had been crucified with Christ. Oh, he didn't know that. He didn't know that yet because he didn't have that information. Mm -hmm. That's Romans 6. Okay, mm -hmm. Romans 6. You know, I was crucified with Christ, and it's Galatians 2.20. Okay? I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay? So Paul was crucified so that now he can serve God. He can serve God. And so he didn't know about all of that yet. Okay? But this is what... He said later, This is the faithful saying worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. I'm the leading sinner mm -hmm. that was saved. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. He can be patient while he's allowing <clears throat> the body of Christ to be formed. He's putting off the wrath, the 70th week of Daniel, the tribulation, and saving this other group to live in heaven for a pattern. So Paul is a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. So he's a pattern for the rest of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. this is how the Bible is laid out. The red is prophecy, mystery is the capstone of information, the advanced information. To and the body of Christ. To, it's to everybody, Patty. Oh. Okay, oh. it's mainly to the body of Christ, but oh. it's for everyone to read. Uh -huh. Because we have, to, the whole armor of God is all the Bible rightly divided for all people that want to live and serve God. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, whether they're in Peter's groups or Paul's group. They need to know Peter, Paul's information mm -hmm. because Paul had the information that I'm going to go over with you in a second. Mm -hmm. Then prophecy again, okay? Hebrews to Revelation because this is what was given to Paul. On Calvary, Jesus saved two groups to give them his spirit and is able to restore the two realms, heaven and earth. The Son's death and resurrection allows the Father to impute His righteousness to two groups and to resurrect them. That little piece of information about receiving the Spirit of Promise was only given to Paul. Okay? Mm -hmm. That was advanced information. Okay. <clears throat> so, I don't know what I did with um, Acts 26. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, 18 through uh, 16 through 18 basically it says I have appeared to you Paul for this reason that you're going to go to the Gentiles okay so that word appearing is in that verse and so I really wanted to have that verse to show you no Patty no <laughs> okay for the purpose <laughs> okay that's good Patty but now I want yeah. you to look at this because I'm it's teaching good. you something new. Okay. Okay. So this was the appearing. Mm -hmm. I appeared to you to make you the apostle to the Gentiles, and you're also going to serve Jews and, and kings. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the appearing that's talked about that you will get a crown if you love this appearing. Mm -hmm. This is the appearing that you must love in order to get a crown, a righteousness. Okay. Oh. Now there's going to be another appearing. Oh, that's the appearing. That's the appearing. Oh. Looking for that blessed oh. hope and the glorious appearing mm -hmm. of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Here's the last appearing to rapture us. Okay? The rapture. So there's two appearings. 
one appearing to, to Paul. begin the body of Christ and another appearing to end the body of Christ at the rapture. All oh, the beginning okay. and the ending. So we have the, the appearing to Paul and then the appearing to rapture us up here. Okay? Oh. All right. Huh? Now, it says in uh, Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 1, 13, 14, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me. You know, those that doctrine in mm -hmm. Romans to Philemon. In faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. So, does the Holy Ghost, is it in us or not? Yes. yes. Okay. How do we know? Do I feel it and start speaking in gibberish? No. No. I don't. I know it because the Bible tells me so. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the only way. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to and, know. And where was that? So that was... Um, So godliness means godlike. Number one, we want to think as God does. Number two, do things God's way. And number three, labor with God. So we have to find out what God is doing and do that. Okay, mm -hmm. we can't come up with our own ideas. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. so God is holy, His Word is holy, and I want God to tell me what to think and to do and not myself. So God said that the key to Bible study is 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, 2 Timothy 2.16. So if we're rightly dividing truth from truth, between the appearings that I talked about, mm -hmm. the first appearing to Paul and the last appearing to rapture us, that's how God divides truth from truth. But someone that's dividing somewhere else or saying that the body of Christ began on Pentecost, they're wrong dividers. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so they are going to increase to more ungodliness. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so that's not going to be good. Let's go over there. Okay. So, no one can come before the Holy Father without the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. This is called justification by faith. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So, when I believe the gospel... Oh, I forgot to give you the gospel. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Well... We, I had it here on the, oh well. It says, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. How that Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So when I believe that, then my sin is placed on him, and I receive his righteousness. And after that, I'm identified with a group called the Body of Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body or group, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. 
1 Corinthians 12, 13. So, the identification process not only saves me, but it also helps me serve God. Galatians 2, 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Who's living in me? Christ. Christ. That's right. He's going to help me keep serve, serving God. Mm-hmm. Christ's life in me is going to do it. It's not going to be my flesh. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 Okay, mm-hmm. so um, I'm going to be and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the Spirit. So I'm not going to, you know, the wine here has a double entendre. I'm not going to drink false doctrine, and I'm not, not going to be inebriated. I'm going to look at the, you know, see what the Bible says. I'm going to, you know, fill up on the Word of God, right, be divided. Mm. So, he, the Lord Jesus Christ is exalted far above all principalities and power. So the kingdom of God is made up of two realms, heaven and earth. And there are positions <coughs> of government in both places. Prophecy is um, mystery prophecy is how the Bible's laid out. Prophecy is Genesis to Acts 9, then mystery, Romans to Philemon, the prophecy again, Hebrews to Revelation. So He's been exalted, okay, here it says, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So, in the future, so, here, there's principalities, princes run, powers, uh, powers of government, might, Dominion, and then there's every name that's named. It's like the lowest rung of a job. You know, so if you want to have a better job, you have to serve God now. So this group here is waiting to um, be raptured. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Patty, the, the battery is only 10% left? Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, because it, it's plugged in. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. Uh, I, okay, make sure the plug is in. Okay. Down there. All right. Oh, it, it, there it goes. It goes? Okay, oh, I plugged geez. it in. Okay, thank you, Patty. Okay, here, guys, are you still going good? Yeah. Okay. All right, so here we go. Okay, so there's three heavens. The first heaven, the second heaven, and third heaven. Mm-hmm. So in the second heaven, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So we're, we're battling against Satan and his fallen angels in the second heaven. Mm-hmm. And what scripture was that? That was Ephesians 6.12. So Ephesians. It, we are spirit, soul, and body, but in our body is still the sinful flesh that keeps us from serving correctly. Okay? Okay, so here's the review sentence. Um, I have fought a good fight. Now you do the same. Huh. That's a challenge to mm-hmm. Timothy. Fight the fight. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then Peter's program looks like this Jesus Christ will be the priest king. King David will rule with him. They're going to be a kingdom of priests. And if they have to wash their hands and their feet, that they die not. That's in this 30, 21. So the 12 apostles are going to be over the 12 tribes. And he said to them, the 12 apostles, Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory. So he's going to regenerate the earth to be like Eden at his second coming. Mm -hmm. Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. 
Matthew 19, 28. Okay. So, <laughs> let's go over here now. And everybody, uh, Lynn, we're over here. Okay, so, here it says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke 12, 32. So, Peter's group is going to get the kingdom on earth. Therefore I say unto you, scribes and Pharisees, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, Peter's group, bringing forth the fruits thereof. They have had faith in who the Son of God was, Jesus of Nazareth. Matthew 21, 43. So now we're li living in a new dispensation when we have a new apostle Paul, a new gospel justification by faith, a new dispensation of grace, a new agency, the body of Christ, a new audience, all people, a new operating system, grace, not the law, a new ministry of reconciliation, not making crease, and a new destiny, heaven. Okay, so let's go through our chapter. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. So the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, therefore is there because since Timothy is serving the Lord during apostasy, and he's going to continue serving the Lord during apostasy, Paul is charging him before Jesus Christ is going to judge the quick and the dead, those living and those that have died at his appearing. How does he do that? Well, whoever is not raptured, we're not a believer, a true believer in this dispensation of grace. Okay? And his kingdom. So this is his second coming. Paul is always talking about the kingdom of God being made up of two realms, mm -hmm. heaven and earth. So here he's talking about when he comes at his second coming, he's going to judge those living and dead at that time. On the earth. On the earth. When he stands on the Mount of Olives. Preach the word. So he's challenging him to preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Be ready when people want to hear what you have to say and when people don't want to hear what you have to say. Reprove. Rebuke. So, reprove them with the Word of God, because the Word of God is sharp and quick and sharper than a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. So, the Word of God is what they need, because that's where the power is. It's going to reprove them, show them where, where they're wrong, and rebuke them. You know, say, you know, you're not doing this right. Exhort or warn them with all long suffering and doctrine. So you're going to be patient with them, and you're going to use the doctrine, the instructions that Christ gave to Paul. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. So a lot of people want to take Israel's blessings and say, hey, they belong to me, when they don't. Okay? And so that is a problem that's going on right now. Mm. Pentecostalism. Mm. Instead of mid -acts. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So it's, it's a fable that the body of Christ began in, on Pentecost. That's not true. Okay? Mm. And there's many other fables mm. that's going on. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. So he's going to be watching for opportunities to, to help God, uh, people to be saved and edified. Okay? Endure afflictions. You know, put up with the sufferings that you have to do. You know, because when it really gets all down to it, serving God is a golden opportunity. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more fun or interesting or worthwhile or purposeful mm -hmm. 
or, or you know, exciting than knowing we're part of something that God's doing. Mm -hmm. Do the work of an evangelist. Try to save people. Um, you know, help them to hear the gospel. Make foolproof thy ministry. Do everything you can to do whatever you can to do God's will. Okay? Mm -hmm. We had God's will. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Oh, here it is. Here oh. it is. Oh, we got what it right it? here. We got it right here. Who will we'll have, have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. First Timothy 2, 4. Okay, mm -hmm. so what should I be doing then? That, right? Mm -hmm. We find out what God's doing, we do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, the knowledge of the truth is understanding the mystery. Yeah. What is God doing today? Okay, put this down. God is forming the body of Christ during the mystery, the dispensation of grace, from Acts 9 to the rapture. So, we want it, Paul says, For I speak unto you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Romans 11, 13. So, he's our one and only apostle. Okay, but watch thou. Okay, so we talked about that. For I am now ready to be offered. Okay, so here Paul brings on the bad news to tender-hearted Timothy. And the time of my departure is at hand. It's within reach, the time when Paul is going to be beheaded. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Paul kept the faith that Christ delivered to him. In the 13 epistles, Romans to Philemon, he didn't back down from the truth. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, at the judgment seat of Christ, and not to me only, but unto all them that also that love his appearing. Okay, so what we talked about what loving his appearing was, the appearing to Paul, because that's when the body of Christ began. That yeah, was the revelation of the mystery that God was forming this other group to live in heaven. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. So he says, do your very best to come to me quick, you know, in a short time. You know, don't, don't dilly-dally, come now. Only Luke is with me. Okay? So, only Luke was with Paul. And this is the verse by which I name my son Luke. I name my son Luke because I oh. love the loyalty that Luke showed to Paul. Loyalty is something that Patty has. And I love loyalty. And when my son was here, I went over Romans Road with him. But I added in to that. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, and 2 Corinthians 5, 21 into the Romans Road. And we have a video on our, um, on our vi video. I forgot to mention what that was. Go over here, g girls. Just, oh, I just want to show this over here. Uh -huh. My website is mariannemanley.com, and our YouTube channel is Salvation, comma, Rightly Dividing, comma, and the Rapture. And Deb Keeble at gmail.com is a, um, an email for if you want to go to Pastor Jordan's uh, upcoming conference, July 15 to the 20th, 2023. Okay? And you can get her to send you this little program. So we're going to be there next Saturday. Okay, so my, I found out that my son isn't saved. I, we thought he was saved as a boy. So if you think of it, please pray for Luke Manley to be saved. Mm -hmm. Take, okay, so only Luke was with him. Oh, mm -hmm. Look at that. I found a verse oh. that I was looking <laughs> for. So this is what, on the road to Damascus. Mm -hmm. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared, there's the appearing, mm -hmm unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee to give you more information delivering thee from the people the Jews 
and from the Gentiles, unto whom now, in Acts 9, I send thee. Because he's recounting his experience on the road to Damascus to Agrippa in Acts 26, 16 through 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to, uh, to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith which is in me. These ones that have been sanctified already is Peter's group. Okay? They're going to be, they've already been sanctified, they already received the Holy Ghost on Pentecost. Now from um, Acts 9 on, there's going to be more people, but these people will live in heaven. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Okay, he was probably very good at writing, had nice handwriting like, like Patty. So he could copy Paul's letters. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. So he's going to replace Timothy. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments. Okay, I believe the books are Paul's letters, and the parchments may be blank paper, you know, papyrus, that mm -hmm. they can write more. Mm -hmm. copies of the, his letters on. Mm -hmm. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So I think he participated with the silversmith Demetrius in Acts 19. And I think he might have even been the one who turned Paul in in Acts 21, saying uh, when Paul went into the temple, lying that he took Trophimus with him. Okay? And so I also think he might be the one that, that accused Paul to the Romans where he's now in, in that Roman jail. Because he lived in Ephesus. Uh -huh. And then Miletum is just south of Ephesus, about 50 miles. Alexander. Alexander the coppersmith. Yeah did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Okay, so we know he's not saved because he's going to be rewarded according to his works, not Christ. Of whom be thou aware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. Satan used him to, you know, not allow the words that Christ gave Paul to go out but tried to hinder Paul's message. Mm -hmm. You remember, he forced Paul to leave Ephesus when it was going good? Yep. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. So Paul wants them, you know, God to help, uh, forgive them, mm -hmm. just like Jesus Christ asked and just like Stephen asked. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. So the Spirit of the Lord in Paul strengthened him. That by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. So this could be figurative or literal. You know, he might have been, um, you know, not thrown to lions then, you know. Yeah. Or he may have escaped Satan from being killed right then. Because God wanted Second Timothy to be written. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute Prisca and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus abode at Corinth. But Trophimus have I left sick at Miletum. Have I left at Miletum sick? So it was not in Paul's character to leave a beloved brother sick. So that's why I think that he was arrested at Miletum. And I used to think it was at Troas. So here's the last verse. Do thy diligence to come before winter... Eubulus greeteth thee, and Pudens, and Linus, and Claudia, and all the brethren. So he had people in Rome that were helping him. 
but his beloved Priscilla was now in Ephesus. The Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit. Of course, he loved Aquila too. Hmm. So, the Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit, you know. Um, grace be with you. Amen. So, that finishes 2 Timothy chapter 4. So, I just want to read this little postscript right here. Shortly after dictating these words, God's, God's last word to you and me, the time came for Paul to be martyred for the cause of Christ's heavenly ministry. There's, that's, you know, why. Mm -hmm. The day of his execution arrived. He knew exactly what to expect. He would put his head on the chopping block. A big, burly, brutal Roman soldier would lift the tremendous blade above his head. Then in one fell swoop, sever his head from his body. But Paul was not afraid. He knew whom he had believed. He could never forget having seen Jesus. His light left him blind for three days. He was not full of care. He had the peace of God. In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, he had let his requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, kept his heart and mind through Christ Jesus. His renewed mind was saturated by the truth of the fullness of God and his love for him on Calvary. His head would drop in the, to the basket. But Paul was confident that before his lifeless body would collapse to the floor, his soul and spirit would already have instantly departed to be with the Lord. He was ready to be loosed, released, untied from this world, and set free to soar above to be with Christ, which is far better. His present body was damaged and dying. He wore in his body the marks of the Lord Jesus, scars, lash lines, eye trouble. Paul was looking forward to the victory of having his spirit and soul freed from his sinful flesh and housed in a new, glorious, eternal body. Philippians 3, 20, 21. He would rejoice in the day that Christ would present the body of Christ to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Ephesians 5.27 It would be holy and without blemish. He would see Timothy. Paul had written down all the doctrine needed for the new creature, the body of Christ, to be built upon, just like Jesus wanted. When Paul finished 2 Timothy, the scriptures were complete. God had finished saying all he had to say to us for nearly 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. he, he finished saying it nearly 2,000 years ago. Okay, wow. that's in, in our book. So, now we're going to go over um, Romans. So, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. So why does it say, there is therefore now? Okay? Why? What's the therefore, therefore? Because of, of seven. Okay? I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. The inward man, his soul and spirit. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. There's, there's another law in my body. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So, sin is in his members. It's in his body. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from, this, from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So his mind wants to do the right things, but he needs a spirit to help him do it. And that's what Roman 8 is all about. 
Okay, this is Romans eight. eight. Romans eight. eight. Okay. So there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So if we're walking after the spirit instead of after the flesh, we're not going to be condemning ourselves for not being able to serve God. We're going to be able to serve God and we're going to be able to have victory over the sin in our lives. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So the law of Moses was sin and death because it condemned Paul. But the law or the constant truth that the spirit of the life of Jesus Christ was in him, Christ Jesus was in him, his life, that made him, sent him free mm -hmm. from that other law. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he had to have the life of Christ in him to help him serve God. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, okay, I couldn't keep it. Paul couldn't keep it. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. He looked just like an ordinary man. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So, because he had never sinned, he was able to condemn sin in his flesh. Christ's flesh. In his body. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Romans 8, 1 through 4. So we can we can keep the law because who kept the law perfectly? Jesus. I delight to do thy will, thy law is within my heart. The Lord Jesus could keep the law and with his spirit in us we can. Mm. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Oh, let me see. What pleasure can I think of for to pamper myself with today? Okay? But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Oh, does God want me to read the Bible? Rightly divided? Does God want me to do His will? To make sure that, you know, all men are saved and come to the knowledge of truth? So that's minding the, the things of the Spirit. Wanting to serve God God's way. For the, to be carnally minded is death. If I'm in my flesh and I'm thinking like a lost people and I just want to eat, drink, and be merry, <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. then I'm carnally minded. Mm -hmm. And that's functionally dead to, to God. I'm not useful. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I can have the life of Christ and I can have peace because I know I'm in God's will. I'm doing what He's doing now. Not something that he did in a previous dispensation. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Okay? So the mind that thinks like the lost is the enemy of God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Okay? So it won't submit to what God wants. It won't keep his instructions. It might, you know, want, it, it doesn't even want to bother. I'm not going to obey you, God. I want to do my own thing. No. Neither indeed can be. So, it, 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 incapable of doing the right thing. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So, if someone is trying to serve God in their flesh, even if they're doing what seems to be right, Probably their motives are wrong. Okay? Their thoughts and intents of their heart are wrong. Okay? It has to be the right motive. It has to be because we love God, and that constrains us. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Okay? So we're not lost, and we're, you know, we have the Spirit of God in us. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, so here it's, we know exactly whose Spirit that is that's in us, right? Mm -hmm. The Spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. 
he is none of his. So if someone doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, God will have to obliterate that person. Okay? Because he won't obliterate someone that has the Spirit of Christ. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Okay? So, our bodies have been crucified along with Christ. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. We have His righteousness and now we have His Spirit. And so we have life. We have His life, we have His Spirit, we have His righteousness. You see that? Mm -hmm. All in one verse. Mm -hmm. His Spirit, His life, and His righteousness. All in one verse. Verse Romans 8.10 But if the Spirit of Him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. So our mortal bodies, such as mine, will be invigorated or enlivened or in strengthened or like Paul's was to give that message. The Lord stood with him so that he was able to have the strength to give the message before Nero. And the Lord is with me and he's giving me the ability to teach this lesson. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. that's how my mortal body is, is um, enlivened by, by the Spirit. Okay, so that was 8.11. Okay. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh. We don't owe the flesh anything to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, of the no, deeds of the body, ye shall live. Okay, so the... The sin is in the body, okay? It's in the fit, m m mortal body. If we're, if we're so preoccupied with the Spirit and renew our minds in His Word, that's going to mortify, and we're just going to say, no, I am not going to covet. I am not going to steal. I'm not going to, you know, let my eyes look at something I shouldn't. I'm going to bring that thought captive to God. And I'm going to say, that's not who I am anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to bed early. I'm going to rise up early. First thing I'm going to do is take my coffee and read my Bible. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So we want to be the ones that God doesn't have to, you know, repeat and repeat and repeat what He wants us to do. We're just going to do it the first time He tells us. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear. You're not back under the law. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. You have his son in you. And so, you know, you've been adopted into God's family. So that whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So now, because we have the son's spirit in us, we can cry, Abba, Father. We can have a personal, intimate relationship to God the Father through His Son. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We know if we were really saved or not. You know, in in our, in, in our uh, the Spirit helps us to know that. And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. What that means is. You know, we're going to be heirs of God. Everything that belongs to Jesus Christ belongs to us. Everything that belongs to us belongs to Christ. So does my body belong to Christ? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Everything about me belongs to Him. He bought me. He sought me and He bought me with His redeeming blood. Um, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. So here we're suffering because we're serving Him His way. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So what Christ has accomplished through us will be revealed at the rapture and the judgment seat of Christ. 
For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. So the whole earth is waiting to see who are the sons of God that's going to be resurrected at our rapture and at the resurrection in the kingdom. Who were those? Who were the ones that truly believed God? Okay, because God knows. So the whole creation, the earnest expectation of the creature, the animals, the plants, the whole fallen earth that is waiting to see who are the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity because, you know, the, the earth was cursed back in Genesis 3. Cursed is the ground, right? Mm -hmm. So we're living in a sin-cursed world. Not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. So the whole creation is living in hope because one day it's going to be, you know, restituted. It's going to be regenerated, like Eden, remember? Mm. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. So all creation and all the, it's going to be, you know, the creature, the animals are going to be you know, uh, into the glorious liberty of the children of God. They're going to share in that liberation that's going to happen in the new, you know, regeneration at Christ's second coming of okay. heaven and earth. Okay? But mm -hmm. it's also going to be in the new heaven and new earth. For who, no, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. It seems like the whole earth and all of creation, heaven and earth, are in labor pains. Undergoing labor pains, wanting to be born anew. Um, and not only they, not only the, the animals, you know, but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the Spirit. We have the Spirit in us, and we can hardly wait to get our new glorified bodies. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body at the rapture. And our body is redeemed, because our spirit and our soul has been redeemed, our inward man, but not our body. So we need that glorified body. Uh, and we're going to get that. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? So we can't see the heavenly places right now, but we know that, you know, we can't see, you know, the regenerated everything, heaven and earth, but we know it's going to happen because God said so. Mm -hmm. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Okay, so we have a con confident expectation that God's going to do what he said. And we're going to patiently wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth in our infirmities. The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So the, the Spirit that's inside of us is helping us in our prayers. Mm. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Here is the, your son, or here is your daughter. They really want to serve you, God, but they don't know how, because, you know, they need help from your word, and they need help from someone that knows, have come to the knowledge of truth. Please help them, Lord, to come to the knowledge of truth so they know how to serve you. Okay. So the, the Spirit in us wants us to come to the knowledge of truth, too. And he's praying, because that's the God's will, right? For all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. And when we have the knowledge of truth, then we know how to serve God, because we know what he wants. We want, yeah. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. So that all things are 
or the, uh, the suffering that we're going through. You know, whether, you know, it, 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 it's a physical disease, whether it's, um, you know, suffering for trying to preach Pauline truth, or whatever it is that we're suffering for, that's going to mature us. That's going to mature us so that we, we're going to be able to serve Him better. So, in, in, in now, He wants us to be ambassadors, right now, and He wants us to be His sub, royal subjects in heaven, later. Okay, so, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. So, it's His purpose, what He's doing, not ours. For whom He did foreknow, He knew who was going to be saved. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. So, He wants us to be conformed to the image of His Son. Okay, through the doctrine, through His Word, rightly divided. And also, that we're going to have those glorified bodies at the rapture. That He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay, remember He was the first one to be in that glorified body? Mm -hmm. The Lord? Mm -hmm. The Son? Firstborn. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, what, what's our destiny? To live where? Heaven. 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 Them he also called, okay, he called us by the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, and whom he called, them he also justified. So he declared whoever believed justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Mm -hmm. So this is a done deal, past tense. Mm -hmm. Glorified is past tense. Why? Why? Because we have the glory of the Son of God in us. Okay? So we have that glory that's going to be revealed in us later, already in us. We're and ambassadors. We're, we're, we have the Spirit of the Son of God. Okay? And what that Spirit of the Son of God has accomplished, it's all going to be revealed later. Okay? Uh-huh. Okay? But we um, haven't now. Been what justified. shall we yeah, say then? Already been justified. What shall? Yeah, we've already been justified. Yeah. So we're we're. It's a, he sees us already in heaven, but we already have the glory going on, yeah. because we have the glory of the Son of God in us, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What shall we say then to these things? What shall we say to these incredibly mm -hmm. wonderful things? Mm -hmm. If God be for us, who can be against us? And the answer is? Nobody. Nobody. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? If the Father, who loved the Son more than anything else, didn't spare his own son, mm -hmm. but allowed him to die on the cross to pay for our sins, how is he not going to give us everything else also if he's already given us his very best? Mm -hmm. Because, okay. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Okay, we've been elected for service, the body of Christ. It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? Who, God's already said that we're... He's already mm -hmm. counted us just, mm -hmm. so no one can condemn us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh an intercession for us. He said, well, I have the scars to prove that I've already paid for that sin too, whatever sin they still committed after they were saved. Okay? So, you know, we're all... We believe. Not, he, yeah, when we're already saved, and um, Christ makes, makes intercession for us. Because mm. the Son of God, okay, Abraham was a father willing to offer his son Isaac. Mm -hmm. And he proved that he loved God more than his son. Mm -hmm. But Jesus Christ proved that he loved the Father more than himself. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Okay, so he loved the Father and he loved his creatures, us. Peter's group and Paul's group. Shall tribulation, you know, the trouble that we have in this life, or distress, you know, the other, you know, distressing things that we have to go through, or persecution, when we're persecuted for our faith, or famine, if we're starving, or nakedness, we don't have clothes, or peril, you know, danger, or sword. It could be, you know, the government is about to execute Paul, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, now, but in Second Timothy, but the government has that power uh, of capital punishment. So, Paul had gone through almost all of these things. As it is written... For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Satan looks at us and says, they're easy pickings. Mm-hmm. They're like sheep ready for the slaughter. Okay? That's how Satan sees us. Mm-hmm. How does God see us? Nay, hey. in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So we're more than conquerors because Jesus Christ conquered. He was victorious. He put his foot on the head of the snake mm-hmm. and crushed the enemy already on Calvary. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. nothing that Satan can do now except keep people from being saved and mm-hmm. coming to the knowledge of the truth. Mm-hmm. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels... Okay, so neither death now if we die nor life you know if we're saved once saved always saved Mm. nor angels nor principalities good or bad angels nor powers nor things present you know governmental powers other kind of powers you know uh, satanic powers nor things to come Okay, nor things present, anything that's happening now, or things that will happen in the future, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature, such as Satan or ourselves, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Once we have the Son of God Spirit in us, we're not going to be unsaved. We're not going to be unjustified. He's not going to amputate a body part. We're saved forever. Mm-hmm. And we're, you know, it's that love of God that, you know, that keeps us safe. So no. there's just a few little things here. No. So are we priests or ambassadors? Ambassadors. Yes. Do we follow earthly or heavenly instructions? Heavenly. heavenly. Yeah. Rightly dividing Pauline believers are trying to free the wrongly dividing believers from a prison they don't even know that they're in. Okay, so it's very important that we're rightly divided being because otherwise we might be like the Galatians. We might bite and devour one another and take heed that ye be not consumed one of another because that's what the law does. So if we say that the body of Christ began on Pentecost, we're putting ourselves under law and we're going to bite and devour people. Okay? So... Yeah. Yeah. Here's here's the gospel. I declare the gospel by which ye are saved, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So, um, Paul said in Galatians 5, 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things you would. So you want to make sure you're in the spirit. Because... <clears throat> okay. So, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. So, God, um, Satan is trying to hide the gospel by which you're saved. And he's also trying to hide Pauline truth. He's trying to conceal that. 
But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So, you know, he's trying to keep them from believing the truth. So, the people that are against us, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So, the prince of the power of the air is another way of saying Satan. Mm -hmm. So, the unbelievers are against the believers. So, we have the mystery of godliness. Okay? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh. Okay? So... Are you yeah. Acts 2, or do you believe the body of Christ began in Acts 9? Acts 9. Acts 9. Mm -hmm. Because the biggest blunder of a church was to say that it began in Acts 2 instead of Acts 9. Let's go over our books real quick. Okay? God had a key for understanding the Bible. And that key is rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15. So, God's secret is this mystery that he's forming now to live in the heavenly places. So, we have a book called God's Secret, and it's available on Amazon. And it's 100 pages on how to understand the Bible. It's an overview in 100 easy pages. Then we have it in black and white for, I think, under $5.00. We have it in hardback, we have it in Spanish, we have it in Norwegian, we have it in Hindi and Nepali. After that, you want to read Romans, a concise commentary, either in color or in black and white. And then, 1 Corinthians, a commentary, 2 Corinthians, a commentary, <coughs> Galatians, a commentary, Ephesians a commentary, Philemon, Colossians, no, Philippians, Colossians, Philemon a commentary. The certainty of the pre-tribulation and rapture is very popular right now, and it's First and Second Thessalonians. And that comes in color or in black and white. I recommend the color because it's so stunning and it's easy to see the maps. Then we have Paul's pastoral epistles, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. We have How to Be Saved Made Simple. It comes in black and white, or you can order it in color from uh, Gerald Halstein on our website. Then we have Could God Have a 7,000 Year Plan for Mankind? And this is the Kindle version, AD 34. Why the King James Bible is the Holy Bible. Just as God said, is a children's book that goes over the Bible in 50 pages and comes in color or in black and white. We have Why Was the Earth Not Formed Void and Dark? And Miss the Rapture, read this commentary on Hebrews. Rightly Dividing Romans Study Guide. This is also a commentary on Romans. Many people ask me, which one should I get? And I say both because they're so different and Romans is so important to get under your belt and this book is very inexpensive both of them are so I recommend that you read God's Secret first and then Romans then rightly dividing 1st Corinthians 2nd Corinthians and Galatians these are all complete commentaries with um, all of the King James Bible in bold and um, this is our old cover on the Galatians book. Ephesians, rightly dividing Ephesians study guide, rightly dividing Philippians study guide, rightly dividing Colossians and Philemon, rightly dividing First and Second Thessalonians. And last but not least in the rightly dividing series is our last one, rightly dividing First and Second Timothy and Titus study guide. Um, Acts of the Apostles, part 1, 2, and 3 are very key to understand. Because remember I talked about the overlap. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. between Acts 9 and 15. It's very important to understand Acts because it's kind of like the backbone of understanding when Paul wrote what and to have the, you know, the backstory. And last but not least, we have Treasure Hunts, Volume 1, 2, and 3, which are all Paul's 13 epistles. So let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Holy Father God, thank you for your incredible word to us. We love that you love us so much because your son, the most valuable person in God in the world, is in us. And um, we thank you for your holy word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. What, what is share. It? Share. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Okay. Like, share, and subscribe. And please give us some reviews, if you wouldn't mind, on the books. If you want to give us five stars. Otherwise, don't bother. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne.